Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So the last video, and I'll post it below, we, we were talking about how America is running out of insurance. Yep. And it's such an important subject that what well, we decided, we're going over a, a particular article that covers a lot of it and we're giving our opinion about it. But we decided instead of stretching it out for a long period of time that we'll make a part two, which this is part two of the original video. So watch the original video. In the meantime, if you like this kind of videos, do me a favor, subscribe. It really, really helps out the channel. All right, let's get started. So basically we all know that Florida is one of the biggest problem childs when it comes to insurance. Right. Okay, and how it's affecting deals. So it's just, it's killing deals in some sense. So basically, let's continue with the article and you guys watched the original video, you know, part one of this. The, pa the pandemic era inflow of people in places like Florida, which welcomed over 650,000 newcomers since 2020, and resulting in construction of homes, commercial property means more assets to ensure more demand for payouts in the event of a castor, you know, a cr crazy ass storm. So, <laughs> I always mess up that word, so I'm not even saying it. <laughs> I was trying not to laugh, I'm sorry. So I have my own. So basically, okay, more people are moving in and now they're building in in my opinion, not the best areas. I'm not talking about, the, I'm talking about ge geography. Okay, you know, where it could flood or low lying areas. I just see some places that they're building and it's like, man, if a storm comes out. Well, like, what do you mean? Like coastal type stuff? Is that what you're- Yeah, like? that's coastal stuff, you know, like, you know. Well, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about in this article. So, you know, 650,000 people in to the state, you know, roughly in 2020, obviously people come and, and, and where and where, and where does everybody want to live? They want to live on the everybody coast. Everybody wants to live on the water, right? And so, and I get that, but if you go to the water, it's, you have to expect it. Mother nature, we're not going to control mother nature, right? Right. And. Look at Miami. Barrier uh -huh. islands come and go. If, you know, I grew up here on the water and I can tell you there's areas that we used to be able to walk across to Cali and we can't walk there anymore because a hurricane opened it up and then it deposited the sand in another spot and now we have another sandbar. So it, everything's constantly evolving and moving. You know, we're talking decades that it takes to do this, but even look at the devastation that we had in the last hurricane uh, that hit, that was south of us here in the Tampa Bay area. Mm -hmm. And it, they built houses on a barrier island. A, bar <laughs> a barrier island. Its job is to deter the water from coming in. And the houses got wiped off, unfortunately, which was horrible. But the barrier island's there to protect the mainland. And, and now they built houses there. And what do you, of course, because it's freaking it's gorgeous. Are you kidding me? I would, it's, I would love to do it. But at some point, you know, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's just, it's not if, it's when. Here's a snippet from the article. The growth of coastal areas in Florida was a major factor in the volume of loss we saw from Ian, said Mark Friendlandler, sorry I butchered your name, the director of corporate communications for the Insurance Information Institute. If you took the same storm 20 years ago, you wouldn't have seen those losses. And it kind of goes back to like what I was saying, because we didn't build in those spots. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's the like, thing is well, we need more land for all these people that want to live on the coast. So then we build these multi-million dollar homes and high rises and stuff. And then we're shocked when a hurricane comes around every 40, 50 years and causes devastating damage. Yeah, so like I see some of these new houses going up, like you're building where, you know, <sighs> that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, when I grew up, like we go down to Indian Rocks Beach, Clearwater Beach, um, Reddington, there were no high rises. We didn't have that there. Mm -hmm. We just had, you know, mostly there was nothing on the beach side. It was all on the other side of the road. You know, and it just, now we have high rises and more buildings. And I mean, eventually we're gonna have something happen. Unsurprisingly, many insurers are limiting business in the high risk states, while those who remain are seeking substantial rate increases or reducing coverage in certain areas. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, if I was an insurance company, I might not want to insure in certain areas. Right, you're trying to mitigate your losses because maybe you're insuring in another area that has higher losses. So they can't have two high loss states or areas, not necessarily the state. I, I it just, for me, I feel like the entire state gets punished for certain areas, you know? I don't know, that's a whole different topic, but you know, let us know what you think in the comments. We appreciate it, you know, it's, I, trust me, I wanna live on the water too, but with that comes certain like issues. I said, Like I said in part one of this video, the house in Hudson, the insurance was $10,000 right. a year. Basically, by the time I'm done, it's 12,000, you know? Yeah. So, and if I get a mortgage, they requiring flood insurance, even though I'm 18 feet up in the air. So if, if I got flooded at 18 feet. We got a lot of problems. Yeah, nobody's gonna be worried about my house in Hudson. Yeah, no, no, we you got know? some serious issues going on. So basically, let's continue on this. Take Florida, homes with the nation's highest home insurance premiums. Seven property insurers have entered insolvency in since 2022, while others have simply given up the state. Florida's state-backed insurer of last resort citizens insurance now holds, at the time of this article, 1.26 million policies, the largest market share, 15% of any other Florida insurance company. Well, and, and citizens doesn't want clients. Exactly, they don't want the policies. It's a, it's a, a, it's an insurer of last resort when other people back out and you have to get insurance to cover your home. There's so many restrictions and limitations when it comes. Like I to don't citizens. think they do cages in back houses. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I really don't. Um, you know, and I get it. Everybody wants to have that lower premium, but again, it comes with a cost. Everything has a, a cause and effect. Right. If you're paying less for your insurance, then there's going to be when you're when and if something happens to your home, you could be paying more money out of pocket or you might be left holding some of the bill because you don't have the proper coverage. That's the problem. But if you can't afford the proper coverage, you know, what do and, you do? And that's the thing is there's so many people moving into this state and people in California want to live near woods, I guess, you know? I guess. The mountains and some yeah. beautiful areas and just freaking, those catch fire and we flood and we right. get hurricanes. That's, that's, it's, You're not it's stopping hurricanes at any time. You're not stopping hurricanes. It's very difficult to stop fires. And it's just, again, it goes back to, like I said, I mean, this may be controversial, but that's okay too. Um, you know, everybody's paying the price for the insurance. You know, we're not in a flood zone. We're not near the coast. When hurricanes come around, we don't see this n anywhere near the same effects, thankfully, that unfortunately other people do. But I grew up on the coast, so I've been through plenty of hurricanes. Right. You know, I've only recently moved more inland. Right. Um, you know, not because of insurance or anything, but just, just the way things were for me. And, but growing up on the water, you know, I, I don't know, it's just different. We didn't have, like I said, we didn't have as much building back then like we do now. You know, those islands didn't have houses on them, and yep. now they do. Yep, let's see. So what do people do? Well, and according to this article anyway, nationally, 12% of homeowners are choosing to forego property insurance, which is up 5% in 2015, according to the Insurance Institute survey. So people are self-insuring. That's what we mean when we're saying self-insuring, right? The, well, that they're well, choosing like, not to insure and back it themselves. Like some people are doing what's called a la carte. You know, if you don't have a mortgage, they might say, you know what, I'm not gonna do flood. I'm not gonna do wind, which is hurricane. Yep, but I'm I'll do, do liability. I'll do liability, I'll do fire, I'll do theft. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe some incidentals if a pipe breaks inside the house. But, right. You know, because a big part of the expense is from the wind. Right. So, you know, on the topic of wind, mm -hmm. at least, you know, because we do, we, we've talked a lot about new construction and things like that. So when it comes to new construction, luckily, you know, there's a lot of new codes put into place, right? Yeah. You know, from, especially for the houses that you've looked at. Yeah. Um, well, I know, I know you don't do codes and inspection on the code enforcement side of things, but you do see the new building with the hurricane clips and straps and yeah. building materials. Like I are, put impact windows in my house. Right. I put a new roof on my house. Yep. They weren't cheap, but. <laughs> right. But it protects your house. It protects your assets. Yeah. You know, um, but with the new construction stuff, the houses are built to 
withstand more of the type of natural disasters that we get here in Florida. So hopefully, like I said, kind of uh, on you know, uh, video one that we did, mm -hmm. it's, it, with the legislation, new building codes, new building materials, that stuff all just takes time to reduce and mitigate the insurer's loss. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that stuff will start kicking in here in a couple years, and then we'll start to see a decline little by little of you know, the, uh, the loss that the insurance companies are, are feeling. So basically in Florida, the share of homeowners that decide to go bare, basically no insurance, runs as high as 20%. That's interesting. Yeah, one of them from former Palm Beach County Mayor Greg Weiss was famously dropped insurance coverage last year after the annual cost of a windstorm policy, where we just talked about, doubled to 20000 Poof. So I'm telling you, a lot of it has to do with wind. But like we said, those are options for people that don't have mortgages. Right. Those who are required to have financing, you know, are, <laughs> the mortgage company wants to protect their investment. Well, of course they do. Yeah. And you don't, I mean, come on, let's think about it. You want to protect your asset as well, right? Yeah. I mean, God forbid something happens. You have a ton of damage to your house. You're not able to live in it anymore. And you're still making your mortgage payment, but you can't live there and you got to go somewhere else. So, I mean, obviously you want to protect your, it's kind of like one of those you can't, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. So according to this article, uh, they interviewed a Jacksonville real estate agent, Heather Kruai, said that 25% of the buyers who signed contracts for one of her sales listings backed out after receiving insurance estimates. So it goes right back to, so in essence, she was the listing agent yeah. and the, the buyers that were coming to the property and putting in offers back, withdrew their offers because they were getting ridiculously high insurance quotes, or at least an insurance quote that they felt was ridiculously high and they couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And it pushed them out of, you know, purchasing the home. So it goes back to kind of what I said earlier. You know, you've got to really look at what your insurance is going to be. It's dictated on you as the, the, the owner and the property itself. So when you're looking at homes and you're putting in offers, you know, you're going to have to get a quote from insurance, but that's what our due diligence period is for so that you can get that. Do that like day one. You know, they're going to need to do a four point and a win too, but like you got to do that. I encourage everybody to do that day yeah, because one because you just don't know. You're right because there's more than 20% of pending home sales fill through in September in places like Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, Dallas, San Antonio, according to Redford, because of insurance costs. Right. And it's, it's, a, it's a sticker shock. You know, you're expect, you know, you could change your monthly payment by three, four, or five hundred dollars sometimes I've seen just with some of my clients in regards to homeowners insurance alone. It's and it's not it's just shocking. it's not just houses. It's everything. It's condo buildings, associations. You know, yeah. everybody's saying why why are my rates going so far up? Why are my rates for going so far off? Because your HOA fees are going super high. Yeah. Right, because they have to offset to pay they've got to pay their insurance bill as well. Yeah, if more than 50% of buildings owners are delinquent in their HOA payments, no units at the property can qualify for a mortgage. So basically, yeah, when a lot of people with the HOA fee, if they can't afford it, they can't afford to pay their insurance. Right. And some, you know, some condo buildings are taking bare bones, in, taking bare bones insurance policies just so they could not raise the HOA fees. But then when the mortgage company comes in and saying, yeah, we don't want to do that mortgage because the building right. is not covered to our right. They just come in and make you require it to come up in price, you know, to the levels that they dictate. Just like anything, they say, "Well, we want you to have X, Y, Z coverage," and if you don't have it, well, unless they're going to call your mortgage, you know, which you don't want to pay that thing all up in one one check, you're going to pay the insurance. So basically, we won't even go into the commercial insurance. Nah. I'm talking about all that stuff, you know, everything. So he, at the end of the day, something has to happen. Right. We've got to, something's got to change. I think it's a good thing that we have legislature in place now. 
here in Florida at yeah, least. Yeah, but it might take a few years to kick in. Yeah, right? to stop. Well, it's it's there, but it's going to take. You're not going to see it for a while because it's going to start slowing down some of these fraud. litigation, yeah. fraud litigation cases that we have going on right now. But think about all the ones that are already in court that we need to go through the process of. Right. Right. So, and then things need to change. And then obviously new buildings, new construction, as people, as you can kind of see in the background, we got somebody getting a roof put on over here. Um, wrong direction. Oh, where are they? It, yeah, it's, it's over that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not your house. You just had your roof done. <laughs> yeah, I just had my roof done. So, you know, those kind of things where they're, you know, you have the option to upgrade when you're getting your roof put on, you know, it's an option to where you can add clips and straps and stuff. So just there's options out there. Think about it and, you know, make the best decision you can for you because all this is going to help mitigate these insurances for everybody and yourself included. Yeah, we'll, we'll you know, we'll update you guys every time something comes out on the insurance industry, what's happening. But it's a national problem. It's not, yeah, it's not just Florida. Florida. It's, it's not every, just Florida. It's an everybody thing. And we, we haven't even touched on car insurance, which is a it's whole a, other no. video itself. But that's today's video. That's it. That's it. I mean, give us your opinion. What do you guys think? And we really appreciate it. Remember, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And hit the bell notification so you're notified next time we upload a video. Thank you and greatly appreciate it. Talk to you later. See you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.